All right. Yeah. By the grace of God, go eyes. <laughs> we made it. But no, no, but nobody knows about this stream because it's just made. So I'm going to go post it. Don't worry. We'll get them in. Yeah, here. they'll be back. They yeah. always come back. I love it. They need the juice. Yeah, they, they need the juice. People are not going to be happy. Come suck. But it's the, the fucking Queens. Are trying to sabotage us. Is they, what's going on? You know, that's probably what it is. They probably sent a, an email to Streamlabs, yeah. and they were like, "Get these boys off the internet." They and I mean, they they would do shit like that. You They're, think so? These are diabolical, uh, diabolical women. So, have you had any type of dialogue with them? Yes, the one row she comes in the chat sometimes. Yeah, so it's, uh, maybe like a month or two ago. And she you- she was uh, I think she was updating her. Uh, youtube channel yeah and then this show got recommended and then she's in the chat being like what the fuck is this <laughs> like seriously she was like what is this i love that she's like why are you guys doing this is like because you don't understand how good this content is it it's needs- the best i mean but it's not it's actually yeah. the worst content on earth <laughs> There's but, never been worse content. But that's why we need to talk about it, guys. The, the, yeah. Okay, let me just make sure that we uh, give a... Okay, okay. So we're here. We're okay, here. We, we are here. here. They're calling me a fucking boomer. Are you kidding? You know how hard this is to do this shit? Dude, running your own production is a pain in the fucking I'm ass. Like, I'm running a TV station right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. It used and to be 40 people running. And these people don't understand the fucking blood, sweat, and tears we're pouring into this kind of shit. Oh, absolutely not. Dude. How do you like <laughs> how do you like this frame? Actually, this is, this is too big. Make that a little smaller. Make yeah. us a little larger. Yeah, bring us. A, there yeah. we go. Okay. We're in there. All right. So welcome, everybody. I apologize for the tech issues. I'm not even completely comfortable that there won't be more, but this is part of the fun, you know? Yeah. I guess it's part of the fun. Um, let's give a, a couple minutes for some people to stream in here. But so we're going to be uh, listening to. I like to wait to kind of explain to the guests what this is. So mm-hmm. this podcast is called The Female Dating Strategy. Uh, I found out about it originally because they blasted me in their subreddit because I made a joke about Gabby Petito. And they had this huge subreddit. Who the fuck is Gabby Petito? You remember that girl who went, who got murdered by her boyfriend in the <laughs> oh, Utah? Oh, in the woods? Yeah. In and the then, woods or whatever? And then he, died. he got murdered too. Well, he killed himself. Oh, he killed himself. Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he killed himself. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. I think he killed himself. Allegedly. Allegedly. But he, so he, um, he killed himself and then I made a joke because she got like six million Instagram followers after she died. <laughs> so then I just made a joke. I'm like, this is gonna be like a good like in, like for influencers, just like you yeah. know, just, just get murdered, get murdered. Get murdered. That was the joke. That's, yeah, that's which is mean. obviously a joke because you're like, why, why? Yeah, cause right. They, and then they were like, oh, see, people think like it's okay, violence against women is funny, and I'm like, no, it's just like a joke. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I'm just telling a bit. It's just, just a doing joke. a bit. Whatever. So, anyways, they didn't like me. They and then I found out about the term low value male, and then and then I found out that they have a podcast. I don't remember how I found out about a podcast, but I was like, I should listen to this. And then I listened to like one minute by myself of the first episode. Mm-hmm. And I was like, holy, holy shit, shit, these chicks are cooked. <laughs> these chicks are cooked. <laughs> they're like, they lost their marbles. <laughs> no, they man. have. So there's three of them. There's three of them. They're And the thing is, their advice is so bad. Yeah. Right? It's like, and my guess is like, the show is it's all women who like can't find men. Yeah. Listening to other women who can't find men. And they're and it's giving them, them like the advice of like, you're all queens, don't change anything. Yeah. Whereas yeah, like yeah. guy podcast is like, change everything. Exactly. Like you're a slob. You need to stop being a slob. Maybe get a job. Get in shape. All these things. Yeah. Like self-improvement. This is none of this is self-improvement. It's all just like fucking kitty beat in the cake. Stay in bed. Totally. Yeah. Never. They're like, you can never go on a date. Uh, like a walk date or like a coffee date. Remember, I told you. Yeah, yeah. Our show the other time. It's I'm, like none of that shit. A walk date's fine. Walk date's great. It's like they they are, are like you would be a low value man. It's they like, think John Cena is a low value male. What, really? Yeah. John Cena, one of the best WWE stars of all Specifically, time. Specifically, because he made his ex wife or not ex wife, but they were going to get married, Nikki Bella or whatever. Yeah, he yeah. made her sign a contract, a seventy five page contract before they were to get married, um, and it included like. It basically referred to her as the house guest in <laughs> the contract and that I love and that, that upon like dissolution of the relationship she the house guest has to move out like the next day oh this is like this yeah. is like they were basically before they're getting married i right? heard so. some no i heard some wild shit about john cena that he's like very particular like you he's like you wear dress clothes to eat out you you use this fork and knife like he's like yeah, yeah, very yeah. like strict on all this shit yeah yeah he's uh but he's also worth millions yeah, of dollars i mean whatever. i would consider Can't him low him. value i mean he's a puppet of the chinese government but whatever <laughs> neither here nor there being chilling <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know about Bing Chilling? No. You don't know Bing Chilling? No, it's Bing Chilling. Bing Chilling is, is a video with John Cena eating ice cream, and he's talking in Mandarin oh, or really? Cantonese, and he says 
ice cream's Bing Chilling, and he says it so weird, like Bing Chilling, and it got so viral <laughs> that Chinese people now go Bing Chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, before we get started, so yeah, so there's three of them. Um, one of them has left the show recently. We've learned because I'm not oh, skipping ahead, no. but some people. This is how deranged people are getting. <laughs> so some people who watch the stream now just listen to the they're, podcast. Yeah, they're invested, and they're getting <laughs> right. They're just like cheating, <laughs> and they're catching they're up. Cheating. But so there, some people have found out that so one of the girls, the Canadian one, she's from Vancouver. She, uh, I guess, got in some sort of accident, hurt her head, and then now. Medical misogyny is is why she like can't get better. Uh, Wait, but what the fuck is medical misogyny? Just like you go to a doctor and it's a dude, and he goes like, "You should probably lose weight," and she goes, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> That's as far as I understand, it's so great. Medical yeah, yeah, misogyny. it's uh. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, so so they're down to two members. One of them is the British one. She just, again, through cheating or finding out, she had a lap band surgery. I think we're gonna start finding out about that soon. Okay. Um, and then there's the American one. So it's it's a bit of a disaster, but we're still on it. Where there's three three still here. I so love you, this. You get all I love of them. this. Yeah, yeah, it's good shit. And we listen to it on one and a quarter speed because. Oh, because we got to we got to zoom through. Yeah, we they're got... just insufferable. <laughs> like 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 Lev was on here two weeks ago and they broke him. Yeah, like, he's he, like... he left here a shattered. Man. Yeah, he's like, I can't do this anymore. It's man. tough. <laughs> yeah. Like like people were in the chat. They're like, let's see if, if Jay could do two episodes. I was like, I don't know. It's, it's like Chinese water. torture. It kind or something. of is. <laughs> There's like real. This has real like church vibes to it. I we're, love it. Yeah. OK, so we got. No, OK, we got enough people in. Uh, so this is this episode's title. OK Cupid answers our most controversial questions about dating apps. Nice. This is from seven months ago. And then we also allow I, I do a vote where people, if they want to skip the episode, we can skip it. OK, so, right. Yeah. On. So we don't we haven't listened technically to all of them because sometimes they're so bad that, that it's like, sometimes uh, it's like a recap of love is blind. And you're like, how is this female dating strategy? It's like, get over it, ladies. Get it. Yeah. Get a grip. OK. Yeah. So let's get down to it. Um, episode 67 of the female dating strategy podcast joined by my buddy Che. Let's do this shit. If you just want to listen to the extra bonus content, we have the Lurker. What's up, queens? Welcome What's up, queens? to the Female Dating Strategy Podcast, <laughs> the their, meanest female-only podcast that's on the internet. Their, I'm Ro. That's I'm their, yeah, that's their catchphrase. The meanest female-only podcast. That's their podcast. Home, yeah, like, the like, meanest like, female-only. so nasty. And they haven't done it in a while. I don't know if their Patreon was not doing that good or whatever, but they had this thing where... If, if if you signed up for their Patreon, you could uh, put up a guy that was like a piece of shit, and then they do this segment called the Roast a Scrote. Yeah, where they would roast because that's the thing. Oh yeah, here's another thing too. People, I'll I'll know this, but so they the way that men are ranked is high value males, and then I think it goes low value males, scrotes, scrotes, and then uh, <laughs> negative value males. And then we have this. You might actually be the third guy. Which one? Which this one? is their merch. Oh yeah. Yeah. So oh. that's Ryan. Okay. Literally looks like him. Looks like Ryan. Me. That, and looks then, like me. And then that does look yeah, like that me. Kinda, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and I bought some of their merch. Support the queen. So what does it say? Liberal tears. Scrote tears. Oh, scrote tears. So that's yeah. like the low, one of the lowest versions of a of a man. I a will say scrote is a funny way to it describe is. a dude. Totally, totally. <laughs> I'll give him credit on scrote. Honestly, I'm telling you, th this is why everybody's still here because. They say the craziest ass shit and then they follow it by like something where you're like, all right, that's pretty based. That's yeah. pretty reasonable. <laughs> that's thing. pretty based. <laughs> <laughs> like they say some of the same shit. I go like, I'm not sure here. I heard Andrew Tate say that. About, yeah. say it. They're like against sex work and all this stuff. All this stuff. Um, okay, so let's get down to it. I'm Savannah. And I'm Lilith. And today we have a very special guest. Her name is Melissa Hobley. She's the global oh, chief marketing officer of Guest okay. episodes generally suck. So I'm going to open the polls up for, okay. for the skip. But we'll Cupid. Listen. And we're going to get into some discussion about dating Although, apps. A, a pretty controversial. She works for OK Cupid. Yeah, so, so she's uh, she's got the inside scoop on the but dating. But it's a chick. This is going to be just full of lies and propaganda. But <laughs> I can already the issue on it. FDS because our audience is very very split on the value of dating apps, both because some women have experienced like real trauma from people they've met on dating apps or just like dating app fatigue or exhaustion. And even our own audience, even though we've actually promoted dating apps on our podcast, even our own audience is a bit hostile when we do it. <laughs> so <laughs> we thought this would be a perfect opportunity to talk to someone who is intimately familiar with one of the most popular dating apps to get some more insight about how to use it, tips and tricks, what's going on. This is by far like the worst dating app, right? Oh, okay, th I don't think, I think OkCupid's okay, dead. I don't think anyone's on that. This is from seven months ago. I think more people are on fucking, what's it called? Plenty a fish than OK Cupid yeah. now. OK yeah. Cupid sucks balls. Yeah, OK Cupid. I don't think I. I think I used OK Cupid for a minute, and then it just like. 
I don't think I ever got a date from it. I love the it's idea like, what is this? of dating app fatigue as well. <laughs> that is like what you like. How how much is this weighing on your soul? I mean, when app? they say dating app fatigue, they're like, yeah, I've been called ugly by like just so many guys. And, and like, I, it's like, starting to get tiring. Like, <laughs> whereas guys like we persist, like we are like a sperm. It is. It needs like to. we are legitimately like we're just like, yeah, just keep going. Well, just if you don't, you going. won't get laid or you will get laid by the worst cut. Right. Like, yeah. You, so you just keep going. But women are just like, like, they're fine with women just being like, it's okay to be single. There are a lot of like, it's okay to be single forever. Like, don't yeah. never settle. Really? Whereas like, like the obvious advice is like settle. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> or improve, self-improve. Self-improve or settle. Yeah. Make yourself like get the hot bod. But the problem is with women is there's only so much type of self-improvement. Really? Yeah. It's like, it's really like most of the self-improvement a woman needs to do is like at the gym. Yeah. And then, uh, and then once you hit like 25, you're basically done. <laughs> <laughs> These... <laughs> These hands would not appreciate that. <laughs> no, they would no, not. No. Um, all right. Behind the scenes, as well as answer some of the pressing questions we got from our Patreon subscribers about user safety, etc. So, Melissa Hobley, welcome. Thanks for having me. I am equal parts excited and nervous. I'm a fan of you all, and I'm aware of the hostility, the dating app, hate. Uh, <laughs> there's a little love, there's a little hate. But yeah, I'm excited. Let's get into it. whatever you want to talk about. I honestly want to say, actually, that I'm glad that you, you you know you're a fan of us because I actually quite like I've said in the past that I generally don't use dating apps as much anymore, but I did actually use OkCupid previously and met two like long term boyfriends that I ended up dating over a year, both on OkCupid, and you know one of them was I would consider high value, the other one I'd consider like more average, but you know if this was like a Tinder representative here, it'd be a very different conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love hearing that. Thank you for giving us a try. I'm glad you made some good connections. We can talk about how to find new ones or not. I also found a relationship on OkCupid. And I think one of the things we wanted to talk about is why there are specific features or the specific features of OkCupid that we think actually helped us vet men that's not necessarily present on the other apps. And then just kind of get an idea of like, you know, the thought process behind them. And I think one of the things that we discussed prior to recording was you talking about the fact that you guys have really been one of the few apps to promote a values-based dating system, like being able to post whether you're pro-choice or not and post your political opinions as part of your profile. I mean, don't people post political opinions on every? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like hinge, they're like, don't swipe if you're like not vaccinated. You can be like, stuff. yeah, vaccinated, all that kind of shit. Like, are there girls with like Ukraine flags in there? Yeah, a lot of that I stuff? don't know if you can do pro-choice on the other ones though, which is something I would love to see in a dating profile. Yeah, if I know a chick's gonna nuke a baby if she gets pregnant, oh, that's, a, like, that's, that's a that's a yeah, that's a pro for sure. Oh, for sure, dude. Huge. You can dump loads inside <laughs> <laughs> with <laughs> impunity. <laughs> I appreciate you noticing calling that out. I think OkCupid is a really interesting story too in that, you know, here's, I find this interesting, you know, essentially there were dating sites, you know, and some of those are 20 years old. OkCupid's one of the OG players in the space. When Tinder came on the scene, it basically exploded the dating app world. All the brands grew. Uh, the stigma went away because you got on Tinder as a younger person. OkCupid is a little interesting because they never had a marketing team. You know, marketing teams are basically like, hey, let's help us. Like, what is the story? Like, what do we stand for? What do we mean? Why would we do an ad that's like meet hot singles now? Like, we would never, by the way, we never do that. We don't do that. And so when I came to this company, but there was like some really special stuff here. And one of those special things that you touched on was there was only one dating app in the world that was trying to bring more substance to the experience that was asking you, do you want to filter on your views on gun control? Do you want to filter on reproductive rights? Do you want to filter on Trump? And nobody else was doing that. And I thought, well, that's. Trump. Uh, Trump what filters? about a, is there a Biden filter? I wonder. I would love the idea of if some dude you're like I can't fuck a Trump guy. Like a girl getting pounded by this guy is she's getting the best dick of her life, <laughs> and then she sees on the nightstand like a Make America yeah, Great Again. No, ah, I gotta go. <laughs> fucking cool i think that's interesting there's something there and yeah what you know what you just called out and here's what we believe is happening we hope it's happening we know it's happening more than it was a few years ago when i joined this brand is it does attract people that not everyone for sure but it does tend to do a better job attracting people that want to bring like bring your issues is kind of like this internal thing that we say pun intended of i want to feel like i'm not weird for saying on my profile swipe left if you voted for trump which is what we saw thousands and thousands of people Are they, is, is she trying to act like that wasn't happening on other apps Oh, dude, that's a big thing. I think I don't know. Yeah. If, I don't know if they would like if there's exp like, a like there's not like tag. a check. Box. Yeah, not a tag. But people put that in their profile. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you can't search by that. Yeah. You can't filter by it like automatically. 
both elections, actually. Or I want to have, you have a filter on religion. If you're really religious, if you're not, if you want kids, if you're not, there are all these filters and we need to power the algorithm. Why is there not a function that says, I stand for reproductive rights, do not show me people that don't. And, and they let me do that. And they let us really lean in on that topic. And we've been doing that for over five years. And again, like, I assume with what she's saying, they allow filtering by weight. Oh, yeah. For dude. I would love that. I, well, they must. <laughs> yeah. But she's saying they have all these options. And I think it works both ways. Maybe you want a chick who's like huge. Like, <laughs> maybe, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like I, the muscle mommy's big right now. The muscle so, mommy. Yeah. So you get a chick who's like, I want a chick who's like six two, maybe rocking around like 220. <laughs> and There's like, that one girl on Instagram. She's like. She posts, she's like huge. Like she's like, like super muscular. No, she's not super muscular. She looks like she's like an ex volleyball or like she looks like a WNBA player, but yeah. she's like huge. She must be like 220 pounds, but Love she doesn't it. look fat. She's not fat. Dude, I, like she's my like six six ideal four. chick is like chicks that look like they are in the WWE. <laughs> they got like, like China? A, oh, maybe not that far, <laughs> but like a modern day chick. Like they got like a neck like a pit bull. Like, you, you want a chick who's on steroids? Uh, like not, on she, test. She's going to be on it, but like, like has. I, I, like, a couple questionably. <laughs> I totally get it. Dating is hard. Dating apps are hard. OkCupid's not perfect. I think we do a better job than most other people out there, but we're also, we're also never done. So I'm excited also here. Like, here's the stuff that you guys like about it. Here's what you think is awful. Here's what, you know, why do you have this thing? And hopefully I know all the answers. Um, If I don't, I'll absolutely make it up and see if you guys can believe it or not. Maybe that's what I'll do. (laughs) Well, to be fair, the vast majority of the questions that we got were tend to be things that are limitations and all of the apps which are background checks and just like overall user safety so what some of them are asking are like what safety messages are in place for us do you mean like criminal background yeah checks? that blew my mind you want a, a dating app to know my criminal <laughs> background these chicks want i'm telling you these chicks are tyrants dude like that's insane i understand they're like oh we're like a dude dudes kill ladies we yeah, know that's yeah. going on but i don't i that personal information i don't think is an app has the needs that information. yeah i mean you should just do a background check yeah you can on your own i guess you'd have to find out you they want a background check before a first date yeah that's crazy because even if you have a job interview they do a background check after the interview yeah to yeah, be able to report so. men who harass us either on the app or we go on a date and they harass us off the app and is that something that okay cupid is aware of yeah that's a great question user safety is important i think the category i think all the apps are trying to do a better job of it so that's a great question so we do a couple of things one is we have humans i mean this doesn't sound really weird but you know when you like you have a problem with a product now with almost anything and you can't ever actually get to a human and it's so frustrating whether you're calling or emailing they're like check our faq and you're like i did and i check our faq and you're like i did i just can i please just connect with a real person and tech has gone the way of getting rid of real people to respond to complaints or issues or concerns or flags and move to like try to automate all of that and some of that you can do but like for example one of the things that you can build software around is looking for messages looking content on profiles messages to other daters that is inappropriate hostile harassing whoa there's like minority reports yeah, here, yeah. Right here so you're like if you said is something inappropriate to somebody else they'll cut they'll flag down. you yeah and they'll know that you're no bad. wonder nobody uses this app <laughs> and also it's like man what's nasty to one person is well of course to another exactly yeah. it's like dude I, if i say i want to spit in your mouth to some chicks they're all about it some chicks don't want spit yeah they don't they're not into that kind yeah, of stuff. which is crazy okay well, i'm trying to see what the if there's a way there must be a way for the best like dating app like rankings oh yeah i, I, I just want to know where we we stand here dude yeah I don't, says okay cupid is that can't be in in order though this is number four but that no, no nature there, there inappropriate photos so that stuff list. we can automate yeah. and we've gotten much much better at that the question is a good one if you tell us i had a bad experience or more i was assaulted or anything like that a human is going to review that thanks for letting us you know I thanks like for telling idea. us let us look at it and get back to you so yeah. at least know okay. that is you get assaulted by your date and you go to okay cupid first before you go to the police yes. <laughs> that's like with the thing with kurt metzger where like you remember like the guy got some chick got assaulted at um UCB and then they're like we're just going to handle this inter- internally at the yeah and at the co- improv school and you're like uh. <laughs> no okay so here is um most popular dating apps in the US is from Statista this is as of t- July 1st 2022 so pretty recently okay. Bumble number 1 Tinder 2 Badu which I've never even heard of nope. Ashley Madison for the cheaters yeah Match eHarmony C date which is maybe Christian. Yeah. And then plenty of fish. Bro. So we're not even. Cr- cr- uh, Hinge cr- didn't even make the cut. Hinge didn't even make this cut. But Match. It's weird because Match is just one. But Match owns. Tinder. A bunch of these. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Match owns most of them. So. 
okay, this did go somewhere. Someone heard me. It's not just like into the void. We then look at the case and there's a whole team. There's a customer service team. And there's also a trust and safety group. We look at that. Again, I'm not in this department. It's not my world, but what we tend to believe and support and say, okay. And then we take a number of actions. We may kick them off of our site. We may blacklist them permanently. There's a number of things that we can do. If you're on the app and, you know, we've also tried to make- So they're like legit shadow banning people. Oh yeah. They're like <laughs> no dick, no pussy the for you. Like the- they're probably because it's like the, the right wing people are the ones who are probably like, I'm being shadow banned on OK Cupid. And you're like, you are. Yeah, no, yeah, they don't and, want you. And that and everywhere else. You know how empowered you are if you get good puss? They don't want to give that power <laughs> to these men, dude. All what is Badu? I've never heard of Badu. Um, <sighs> Meet the, people. Is it... the, and these algorithms, in terms of the way they get you to spend money, the uh, what's it called? A hinge is the worst one. Because Hinge will show you a bunch of girls. You can like kind of you can go through like a lot of them. Yes, no, yes, no. Yeah. But they also have the standout section. So you have these like hotties, and they're like you can only contact these standouts if you have a rose, and you get like one rose a week or whatever. Oh. And but you can buy roses. Sure. But then you're going through the ones they give you. Or like why are they? They're like yeah, if you want to go through the mud, you can try and find <laughs> a hottie here. <laughs> The but, mud. but they're like, there's you got to pay to get the top yeah, shelf sure. shit. I mean, again, what, the problem is that there's guys with money who are like, yeah, fine, that's fine. Yeah, you know, I'll I'll just, just... I don't care. This money is inconsequential to me. Make it a lot easier. So if you're on the app and you see a profile or someone sends you a message, you can report. And when you click report, there's like, you know, thanks for sharing that with us, what happened. And, you know, again, we try to make it easy so you can tell us what's going on. And then, again, humans review that. And we take it, you know, we take it really seriously. Again, I think we're better than where we were. But, you know, there's a meeting every other day on this issue and how apps can keep doing a better job of it. I can obviously only speak to OKQ, but how can, you know, how can we do a better job of it? Let's say what I have noticed even in the past year or so is that there are expanded reporting options on all of the apps that didn't used to be there. And so is that like an overall industry push? Do you know, like when OKCupid started to really take it seriously? It is an overall industry push. You know, I think it's like one or two on here's what we have to keep doing better, improving, investing in. So it's good that you notice that. Again, I'm, I've been in this world for a minute. It's so much better than where it was. And then, you know, OKCupid is global. So depending on where we are in the world, we will dial, we may even dial that up further so that people feel supported and they have access to resources. Tell us the countries. Yeah. Which countries are you dialing it up further and dialing it down? Yeah, which one's got the worst dudes? <laughs> yeah. They actually do have the data yeah, yeah. on like, like literally where- go, where are the pushiest men on earth? <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> That is information that should be, you go, yeah, you got all these stats. Public knowledge. Yeah, yeah. let us know. And all creeps. the things. I'll tell you what was interesting, and this was surprising to me, what happens more often than not, and I think you guys are driving conversations around this to chip away at that, is we feel shame. We feel embarrassed. People feel, oh, God, this happened to me because, and it's some, you know, ridiculous reason, and, you know, holds themselves to blame, and they don't tell us because of those reasons. And so, you know, if, if you get nothing else out of this conversation, if anything happens, please do tell the apps, because if you don't, if we're not told we can't do anything about it and fucking love kicking people off when they <laughs> behave badly, they get out of here and you are not welcome ever again. Can I just say it actually feels so good kicking off people who are being assholes? Like I felt the same way when that subreddit was open and someone was just going off in the comments or being an asshole. And it's like, well, boop, you think the, ratio, you think the to... ratio of men to women getting kicked off? Oh, like are yeah. any women getting kicked off who not, are actual women? Well, you not men pretending to be women. You need chicks on the app. The chicks make the party good. So you can't really kick the chicks off. No, if it's a sausage fest, no one wants to be well, on yeah, there. It's pointless. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. Yeah, but I'm saying, yeah, like, are women doing inappropriate stuff? Because there are women who are inappropriate. Oh, there's women who are inappropriate, but men just are open to it. Like, right? Yeah, guys, it's a laugh. It's like at the most. Exactly. One chick messaged me recently. She's like, "When you're in New York, you can tear my ass apart." (laughs) I was like, "Sure, sure." (laughs) You're like, "I live here." Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Listen to you anymore? Bye. (laughs) So it feels so good, right? So I think that's an important point. So acknowledging that, I guess the industry is trying to even though a lot of women are maybe disgruntled about it, especially if they're going on prior experience. The industry is trying to expand its reporting options. Now, if you report something, especially something like an assault or even a harassment or something that would be against the terms of service or just being a decent human being, you can report it to OkCupid. They have someone manually review it. And then like, is it generally like a one strike you're out thing? Is it like, you know, how do you prevent someone from just creating another profile and then starting all over again? Is it easy? No, that's a great question. So (laughs) this is not like, I mean, that's ever... Guys, take notes. Conversation like the, the American <laughs> system, but this is not a like, oh, you get three strikes and then you're out. No, get the fuck out. You're one and done. When I mean, okay, you've been started, like, again, like we're the OG in this category. We're like the underdog now. We used to be like, I mean, we're the underdog. And when you move to an app and you know how most of the apps you put on your phone, they require a phone number. That's great for a number of reasons. And one of the big reasons is in formerly when app, when dating apps were sites and not apps, 
it was really easy for people to manipulate the system because if all you have to do is give an app your email address, it's so easy to just create a new and create a new agreement. And, and there are measures in place where I can ban IP. And if you ask me to go a step beyond that on a technical level, I will have to refer you to someone. But we can ban IP. So that helps us say, you know, we're going to prevent you from bad behavior. Just- Damn, I wish I fucking had a VPN's uh, sponsorship yeah. right now. <laughs> Under a new identity, blah, 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 blah. But having, <laughs> requiring people to give a cell phone number also really helps because it's easy to create a new account or new profile if you've been kicked off or you've been, you know, blocked or whatever. Most people don't have a num- endless cell phone numbers to do that. So that's been really helpful in OkCupid, okay, basically. I believe there's a site for that as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, there's workarounds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If I want to be on a creep on OkCupid, okay you better <laughs> yeah, believe I'm Try it. Stop me, lady. <laughs> Taking the safety and proactive steps, you know, another step further, you know, for making it harder for you once you've been kicked off to come back. That's good. That means we're doing the right thing. And sometimes people will say to us, listen, men and women, I was kicked, you know, they'll email us because you know, we blocked them and essentially disabled their account. And they'll say, I really don't know what happened. I don't think I did anything wrong. I think this person was mad at me. It is complicated because I rejected them. And men and women will come to us. And then again, that's why you need humans to go in and win the conversations this is also like another little tip is when the conversations are on the app obviously we can see that so mm-hmm. you know we can go to the text we can go to the chat we can go to the profile Ooh, we can look honestly the, the fact okay cupid is admitting that they might go through your dms yeah i'm like that seems i don't know i, I wonder i never thought if there was any sort of like expectation of privacy in your dms on i just hope man on dating <laughs> apps like is it like facebook because twitter is like that where they can just go and look at your yeah dms on twitter but well, they can't on facebook yeah like you just want it to be because you're especially on a dating app you're gonna get dirty yeah you get gross and some of them allow you to send pictures you're gonna <laughs> you're, that's crazy yeah your dick's up in there <laughs> <laughs> and it goes off the app it's harder for us to know that but we do take it really seriously and again it's like a really big focus always i don't think we'll ever stop being focused so i'm glad to know that the uh phone number thing isn't just like an annoying data phishing feature because like i remember when they started requiring phone numbers and i was just like annoyed like oh so much more data that like, these apps want me to give them but that actually makes sense as a filtering mechanism that makes a lot of sense um, because it is actually harder for people to keep recycling their phone numbers as well as like obviously if you have your phone they can search your ip address unless you like you have to go out of your way with like a vpn and then keep changing your number yeah, to uh, try to bypass the features the block features that okay keep it would happen that makes sense yeah you're then getting into like professional scammer territory <laughs> with like <laughs> vpns and like you know all your phone numbers or just amateur pussy hub yeah it's professional scammer amateur pussy hub yeah it's like these are, these are the beginner moves <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. having several apps so that you can <laughs> stalk someone endlessly. yeah there's so many guys who have like a fucking stack of phones being like oh yeah, yeah, yeah okay you okay. got me okay cuban <laughs> and all of that that's like next level and there's teams that you know try to shut all that down often you know as well but, but yeah the phone number is an annoying thing it's like enter the text we just sent you well we do that not to be annoying i mean it is annoying but the goal is because we're verifying that you are who you say you are so just off the back of that, Melissa, we, you know, and also talking about, you know, background checks and keeping uh, women safe, a lot of, or an issue that comes up for a lot of women, both inside and outside FDS is the fact that, and this is across all dating apps, not just okay keeping. This is the one that had the lap band. Oh yeah. The Savannah. What's, what's a lap band? Uh, like the surgery for your stomach. So you just- she was a she was a woman of size. Oh, so that you don't eat as much, yeah. like a gastric bypass. Yeah, that kind of shit? yeah, exactly. Oh, but I thought she didn't have to improve herself. I think her advice wasn't really working <laughs> out, so then she had to make some drastic changes. In particular is that she might be. I don't know who my favorite is. I think everybody is different. She might be my favorite. Yeah, all right, but all only because right. I like the accent. Nice, nice. You know, people can say you know they're looking for a serious relationship and a casual relationship at the same time, or for example, they think that they are matching with somebody who's single, but then actually they've matched with a couple and they're being you know unicorn hunted. Um, like when I was in the BDSM community, this was a massive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the couple of them were in the BDS. Not even just her. And they're so weird because they're like. In the beat, but then they're like they're very against BDSM and all that stuff. They're so, against sex work. They're anti-trans. They're like turfs, kind of. They're anti-trans. They're all turfs. Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're not even like. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, they're weird. I'm telling you, man. That's why people are like, "What the fuck?" Like they have all these takes, and then they're like, "Yeah, but like you know, shouldn't share washrooms." And like they're all really all of. She's like in a wrestling. <laughs> what? It's really weird. They're a weird you group. You thought they'd be like you're because you there's like a template for a feminist that you think all the things Lib- that's liberal feminists. They yeah. hate liberal feminists. Oh. They've, they've been like 
subject of like all these like takedowns by like Vice and Jezebel. Okay. Don't like them because they they don't conform. They're not they're non-conforming feminists. feminists oh, wow, you know. the rogues. Yeah, they are rogues. That's Massive problem. Part. And I just wanted to ask you know two questions. How can you know? Firstly, is there a way to report people who are sort of bypassing the system, so to speak, engineering their answers in order to attempt to attract a wider population who perhaps wouldn't be interested in them? And secondly. What she just described was lying. Yeah. yeah. She yeah. said, like, just, she literally goes, is there a way to prevent men from lying? <laughs> it's like, no, nah, not today. <laughs> what and kind not of ever. oversight do you want from an app? Yeah, exactly. Like they, it's crazy. They like, scan your eyeball and get your but DNA it's just like, or something. It's like saying, like, oh, you're, I'm 6'1", and then you're, oh, you're 5'11". And it's like, like, can the app do something about that? <laughs> Like we want it. We want. Is that there almost power. a way to you know to filter out the people who almost want opposing relationships? If that makes sense, or they want something serious and something casual at the same time? How can we filter that out? This is basically the question of like men who lie about their age in the dating apps, right? As well as lie about their intentions. Women lie about their age too, though. Yeah, that's yeah. probably they probably do it more so. Yeah, and it, lying about your intentions, dude, that's <laughs> the number one thing chicks do because because yeah. you go like. Well, every time I not every time, but there's been plenty of women. I tell them straight up like, hey, I'm not interested in anything. And they go like, OK, that's cool. We can sure. just be casual. And then they slowly try to chip away at you with of little course. things to pull you into the boyfriend yeah. category. Absolutely. And it's like, bro, you've been lying this whole time. And then they go crazy. Yeah. And then you go, eh, and on to the next one. <laughs> which is like the biggest problem that women identify is like some guy is actually 40 but he sets his profile to 29 because he wants to try to get with uh, women do women ever fudge numbers with stuff i, I don't wonder. know i don't Does know let's fudging? get on the scale sally <laughs> <laughs> who are in their 20s or they lie about wanting a, a long-term relationship when they're really just there for how the fuck the, like these aren't these women aren't stupid i'll say that yeah. like they're not like they're but they're like how do you expect an app to stop a man from lying about his intentions. I don't know, dude. They want like a lie detector test to yeah, be like, like hooked <laughs> up to him and then to his phone, which OK Cupid's <laughs> gathering that data. That's insane. That's because they know a lot of women wouldn't swipe. Yes, totally. And with the unicorn hunting as well, it tended, you know, sometimes they would actually use the woman to almost. Be unicorn is, by the way, that's, I believe. Um, Someone who wants to have a threesome. Yeah, a chick yeah, who wants yeah. to have a threesome, threesome with, with a guy and a chick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like the honey trap you know because they felt that, no, firstly, the woman was more physically attractive, generally. <laughs> but secondly, is that a woman would, you know, she's a lot more likely, you know, to let her guard down if she thinks she's conversing with another single woman. And we've had especially um, like lesbian women saying, you know, I thought I was talking to the single woman and then she just brought her husband along to the date like with her and saying we're a couple yes i by the way, these <laughs> are some emotional what do you think about this feature okay <laughs> like it, it would have to be probably pretty advanced but i bet it could work like maybe some ai algorithmic type thing where it takes these photos these up here photos yeah but like just like clavicle up up here this angle photo and then recreates a full body image <laughs> You think you think they could do that? With BMI and everything, like everything, just like like literally, they go. You take that photo, and then they go. Here's what this whole full body. I've definitely learned through apps and all this stuff. I'm like almost every single chick you see. I'm like she's like a uh, half a point uglier than you think. She sure, is. yeah. Like with the filters, all these things. Yeah, yeah. Because the ones who are half a point hotter, they're not on apps. No, no, no. They're the, fucking they're killing it. Yeah. <laughs> interesting questions that I've gotten. People are usually like, "Oh, what's the best day of the week to be online?" I'm like, "Ah, oh, Sundays." <laughs> this is so interesting. That's coming, Melissa. That's coming. <laughs> It's kind of great. Uh, great. Like, what's the best profile picture to have? Well, the data says. Blah. So that's a great question. First, what I'll say is not all dating apps are created equally. And I think that you should look at what is not just what are all of your friends on, but what is the app that is right for the experience that you're looking for. So Hinge is a great app. They're designed to be deleted. They are, you know, you should only be on Hinge, technically, if you are for a serious relationship. I think that what happens... Yeah, that's the only reason guys are on there. Yeah. yeah. Like, guys sign up for Hinge and go, yeah, app meant to be deleted. And you're like, yeah, when you kick me off. <laughs> When I get banned from here, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm I'm in here hunting, dude. Like when it's I just so naive though. When I'm on the road, it's like you're in a new city. I just fucking I'll download all the apps and just go blow them up. Just <laughs> yeah. blow them up. And it's there's I was in Chicago and I found this girl's profile and she said I'm just here for Chay Arena. She really? had made like a Tinder profile for me to find her. Ah, dude, killer. yeah, dude, it was great. And you work. met up with her? Oh yeah, and I met up with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we actually we had a threesome with this other chick who was at the show, and then the two girls got in a fight. Really? <laughs> yeah, dude. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Happen, what we say at OK Cupid is we're high intent. We are not designed to be deleted. We have lots of people that are looking for short term. The majority of our users are looking for something serious. What I think is really good about OK Cupid is it takes a few minutes to set up your profile. And if you are just looking for the 
the gamification, the hot or not swiping, which I hear about all the time. And that's a real thing that people are just on the app. And we've seen those videos on TikToks where the guys are just right, swipe, right, 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 just as fast as humanly possible because the dating apps, what we call it in the biz, is double opt in, meaning you have to swipe right and the other person has to swipe right or we won't let you talk to each other. And by the way, there's like the reason for that. But why OkCupid is tends to weed out some people that are just there for the pen pal or the hookup is because they won't bother. They will not bother with the time and the energy that it takes to answer questions, answer post profile pictures. So I think that's an important thing. And it does help us tend to find people that are a little more mindful. They're slowing down a little bit. They're happy that it's going to not happy because <laughs> filling out also filling out your profile on a dating app is really, really hard. It's like harder than your resume or up to your LinkedIn for a job or whatever. I think, and I've heard, is a dog. Oh, okay. heard about what you're talking about. Here's what we try oh, yeah. to do. We have this analogy that we use internally. Okay. Cupid, which is like big, big tent, small tables. And then if you show up at the party, I want to get you what you're looking for. You're looking for serious. I should only show you to serious people, which is why we ask that question. You know, it is hard for us to, you know, make sure, are you being totally honest about that? That is hard to do. What I tell people is you can often get to that by spending a little more time on the profile, right? So to use a like kind of overly simplified example, if you're looking for something serious and there's a guy whose profile, you're like, okay, this is capturing my attention. And there's, you know, let's say for example, there's very little on the profile. Okay, Cupid does not want to be Tinder. We do not want you to have three words on your profile. Even if you're looking for a great Saturday night, you're interested or you're turned on because, oh, he, you know, this guy's kind of interesting. He's talking about racial and social equity on his profile. Like, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> Uh, you know, whatever it is, you know, I think. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't mean it, though. No, you, if the last place I want to be bringing up racial and social <laughs> inequity is in the dating. When I see people Crazy. who, like, identify by their political beliefs in their profile, I'm like, well, it's like, I don't, it's fucking sick if you have these things. <laughs> yeah. But I don't want that to be your personality. Like, everything we do is to center around this shit. No. Also, also, because they have all the stats, would love to know who has a higher propensity to be a rapist. Because I would guess it'd be the people who put that shit yes. in their profiles about the social and whatever nonsense. You know, look for, if the guy has like, oh, he's like, I'm looking for something really serious and I can't wait to have kids. And there's nothing in his profile and his photos are like Vegas pool selfies. Like maybe he's not <laughs> being really upfront about that because it is hard to do that. What I also say with what is helpful, if you're looking for something serious on OkCupid okay is you power the algorithm and we're unique in this way and that a lot of dating apps, it's location. They'll ask you a few things, but we have over 3,000 questions. You have to 3, insert 15. 3,000 does sound like a chick fucking invented this app. Yeah, holy <laughs> shit. 3,000 questions, bro? Yeah, no one's getting in. The rest are optional. If you want to go down a rabbit's on issues on social equity, on politics, on reproductive rights, you you can and we'll let you do that. But that's another indicator of how serious someone may be about this, right? Like if they've answered lots of questions and they've taken that time. And again, does that 100% mean they're looking for something serious? No, but it's an indicator. I have to say those questions have been 100% clutch because a lot of times you can see what we would consider red flags like right out in the open. Yes. <laughs> right, especially you can see the deal breakers. And I have to say the questions as well as the ability to filter by specific traits and values that you want in a partner have been really, really useful. And I think actually sets okay, keep it apart from a lot of the other dating apps as far as its efficacy for women specifically because a lot of the things, it basically eliminates the need to go back and forth in your inbox to ask them very basic questions about values that you can see on their profile. Yeah, I really appreciate you saying that. And I think that's so true. And I think it's wild that no other dating app will let you match on social and political issues. I just think that's wild. Why doesn't every single app have a question on how do you feel about abortion? Or what is your stance on reproductive rights? Right, even I mean, that question is leading the witness. Or that you can't filter out someone that believes climate change is not real. I personally don't understand why. I mean, I do understand why other apps don't do that. I have a theory and you let me know. Ooh, let's hear it. So my theory, and I've talked about this before, is once again, because some of these are public companies that essentially women are the product. And so the longer they can keep us on this app and basically incentivize yeah, men to right. keep spending money to talk to women who don't want to talk to them, then they can keep monetizing it. That essentially that the interest of women in matching and filtering their options is counter to the goal of the dating app, which is to get a large enough pool of women so that the men who overwhelmingly... JJ's in the chat, by the way, and he says, fattest women, okay, Cupid. <laughs> <laughs> spend more on the app than women will keep spending. And so, like, part of our frustration, I think, is just the reality of capitalism uh, is that sometimes the capitalist incentive is not in line with the user incentive, especially as women. Some of the major apps have been somewhat dismissive of women or that they send you people that in no way, shape, or form you would ever be interested in dating and waste your time trying to swipe on them. I honestly hit rock bottom with one app, and I don't mean to brag on myself, but I have a master's degree. I take care of myself. I live a pretty nice oh, life. <laughs> and they sent me a picture of a homeless guy who lives three states away. And I was like... No, no. <laughs> and at that point, I was like, it was taking. 
So we're dating now. <laughs> in a public library bathroom. And I remember sitting there being like, this is such a waste of my time. And I, I felt like actually disrespected as a consumer. And the app, I'm not going to say, but it rhymes with Cinderella. But it was it's a situations like that where I think women start to feel fatigued because we're like, and I actually went through just for research purposes, because I was thinking about writing an ebook about how to navigate like dating apps, like paid for all the extra features just to see what was working and what was not. And some of the other apps, they give you a bunch more access to your likes, but it's a bunch of guys you would never actually date. And that's just a lot of labor to go through and do all of the filtering. So I think there's frustration i think the fatigue the frustration and like why a lot of women are feeling sort of betrayed or like annoyed by the apps because it does start to feel on our end like man are we just like the meat market and you guys are just not paying attention to women as consumers so you can prioritize men versus like and i found that at least with okay cupid the filtering options are there so like there's guys i know i'm never gonna date right i know i, I won't date a guy who smokes weed right like i don't smoke etc and that no judgment as people do it's just that like i don't smoke and i don't like and allergies etc something like that where i feel like i can just filter someone like that out and it's not a disrespect to them but you just don't like waste your time or you know you're even things like height yeah yeah it's a, it's a compatibility thing though like you are maybe not gonna be as compatible with somebody that is like you know smokes every day I, that's really interesting you should totally do that book by the way <laughs> i like how she more. was so open-minded to weed smokers yeah it's like yeah you know people smoke that's totally that's your yeah, thing that's but thing, like but... any other issue trans issues bdsm she's like get that shit the get fuck that shit. And the funny thing honestly is if you actually gave them this i like i wonder if they're just left with on OkCupid like four guys because yeah. they have so many requirements. Or inside yourself. Listen, I have a big mouth and I get in trouble for stuff, but I can I can really understand that feeling. I can really understand like I think and dating apps. It's interesting. Someone said he working at a dating app is the nightclub and bar analogy is interesting. It's much easier to get guys. You have to really think about the women. I do think that prioritizing that female experience is how like listen. Also say okay, Cupid was totally irrelevant a few years ago. Like I'm glad that you guys tried it and had a little luck, but it was hard. It was an app that people had stopped talking about. And to your point, only these questions and filters. I said this once and someone's like, what are you saying? But I said, we have Trump to thank. And what I mean by that is something really interesting started happening. And it was in the lead up to the 2016 election. And that is people got political on their profiles. And they started saying, and you could feel the anger from women, you could feel the worries about reproductive rights, which by the way, is like coming true, like we were not overreacting, you could feel the trepidation, you could just you could feel it. And so we started like these really amazing data scientists, I'm like, I need you to show me what's happening with people, like how much are the phrases like swipe left, if you support Trump, this is something for the election. And it's less about like identify as this party or this, like, you know, these different, if you're not voting in local elections, please don't message me. If you are not engaged and showing up marches right now, like around Black Lives Matter, like shifted to a movement, then don't talk to me. And the increase in, in political phrases in just two years went up 4,000%. And we've been around almost 20 years. That's never happened. I also like looking and sharing data at OKCupid okay, because we've been around. Trump really just fucked up everything yeah like he was like a wrench into like just every single thing like oh. music comedy like whatever nothing dating. could just function the way it was no. it just riled everybody up man <laughs> it was so crazy pissed. i do like that she was like oh wow well, we we these other companies are focused on like what men want and not what the women want it's like who the fuck you think spending money on the <laughs> yeah, app of course women they, like unless you're super old probably women don't have to spend a dime <laughs> Unless you're super Well, I guess at some point women are like get treated like at a certain age women probably go back to being treated like men on the apps. Yeah, which is like oof, that's gotta be hard. Just like just like in a nightclub though. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, you're a woman until like at a nightclub until you're like old and then they're gonna go get in line with the guys. I don't know. In a long time, and we don't sell it. By the way, we're not in the ad revenue game. Like, it's, it's not how we make money. Data can be a scary word. So, I, so I think this cool shift of bringing these things to life in your profile. I, people felt uncool. They felt, oh, you don't do that. And you know why? Why don't you feel like you can say that on your profile on Tinder or on one of these other apps? And so we just really tried to lean into it. And on the questions and filters, we add them every day. I think people are proud of their values and I think there's nothing wrong with that. It just seems that most of the apps from my experience, even the ones that are trying to be female first, that they deprioritize the values based dating in favor of the like image based dating. And I think that just, again, it could just be like time spent on the app. If you post a lot of beautiful pictures as a woman and you keep like incentivizing women to post pictures of themselves, like you'll attract men to that type of app, right? But the problem is comes when women are trying to date and filter this out. Now you have to try to match someone based on their values. And I'm not saying men don't have values too. And there's men that absolutely do. There's just like such a large pool of men that don't, that like they ruin it for a lot of people. So it's just that like, if you can't match with someone based on like how you feel about very important issues in your life, that clearly creates like a big barrier or you have to spend so much work like vetting this person to make sure they're safe. And then like, but if you meet them in person, then you have to go through a lot of like basic questions. And then you're sitting at a dinner and you're talking to them on a coffee date, which we don't do. <laughs> like some people too and like you're finding out a lot of things no coffee dates no you're not allowed to 
So what it are just the, means that the dude's wasting your time. That's how they feel like a what? It's like I have to go get ready, and then we're just gonna have a coffee. Oh, uh, they're like you. You got to pay to get get me out of. Yeah, that. they're like you're like I'm spending all this money on my appearance, blah, blah blah. Like why should I go on a coffee date with you? And it's but he doesn't know what he's getting out of you either. It's like yeah, well, I mean obviously, and also like I don't know. I've been on coffee dates before that was suggested by the woman. Yeah, and it's also it's like it, it, what is the goal of the date for them to get a fucking fat steak or something? That's kind, I, I mean, dude, the joking name of female dating strategy is free dinner strategy oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah that's what they're shooting for i thought the date was to maybe they went with the mentality to like meet someone and get to know them they're like oh yeah you can do that no but coffee. they're also like yeah i spend 80 bucks on my hair and my nails so it's like we're going somewhere nice okay it's like i don't know how nice you look though was that no had you known front, <laughs> like you would have never gone out with this person yes and then what a waste of time and when you are i don't know you're a single parent you know even going on the date is a feat between a babysitter or maybe your shift or whatever it may be so yeah don't waste your time because also on okcupid we have a match percentage so if you're like why are you showing me this person to you well you can see it because you was like oh you're a 92 percent match or a 60 percent match and this woman said oh we're a 60 it was i don't know something low and let's see why that is and she opens his profile and the video is you know would you date a feminist and he's like no do you support only the right to choose or you know i forget what the exact language is i think that abortion is murder and she's look he's like oh my god but then she knew i'm not gonna waste my time on yes and not i also am not a fan of the coffee date from your lips to our ears yes because <laughs> everyone drags us for not doing the coffee dates <laughs> no i support the anti-coffee date that's awesome to hear can i just say that what i like about okay cupid is that it encourages men to just and i guess i haven't used hinge either but i guess it has a similar function where these prompts encourage men to lay out all of their red flags all out in the open so you don't have to waste your time <laughs> going on a date with someone who you know would then again like i've had so many bad dates that i met on like tinder or other platforms where they're more like appearance focused and those dates are end up becoming so bad that they become like comical like stories that i can tell on the podcast later kind of thing right so yeah you do save a lot of time crazy because we're 67 episodes in and i haven't heard one of them but... oh <laughs> you get fucking called out that's what's going yeah, on yeah, you haven't I haven't heard one bad date story it's also it's like man what not you... to that extent like but when you go on a date and it's bad which she thinks it's not bad for the other dude he was like it was sick i had a great time no you were boring dog yeah yeah for sure she's like exactly she was fucking and these are eternally single chicks they're striking out all (laughs) over the country yeah they're gonna be but i guess you're gonna be single for life you know you also miss out on some of those like you know crazy bad date stories that you can laugh about later i'm fine with that You know, listen, if, yeah, if you're working on like your stand up, you will not want to overly vet your dates. Yeah, and Hinge has avoided the political social issue territory, but they do prompts that get stuff out there, you know, like embarrassing stories. Or they ask these sort of bait questions that a toxic man would put in an answer that would be a red flag to, you know, a well trained kind of thing, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I want to say that really helps oh, with I vetting them, actually is. I wanted them to leak, like, like if he said this, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, don't write that down. <laughs> yeah, write that down, write that down. <laughs> Is the fact that OKCupid seems to have like a longer character limit, I guess, on the bios. And so when I was using OKCupid, you know, it was a red flag if a guy only had, you know, a few words in there. If it was like, oh, yeah, looking for a good time or looking for to have adventures or, you know, something really short, then I'd be like, okay, this guy's obviously lazy. And then there were the other guys where they're on the opposite side of the spectrum where they would max out that character limit and write like a whole novel about themselves. And that would just be too much. And I'm like, this guy's clearly narcissist. Yeah. <laughs> A novel, yes. And you're like, wow, what is... <laughs> like, long lists about, you know, the traits that he looks for in a woman. Like, oh. I want a woman with, like, a waist-to-hip ratio of this amount, or, I, you know, a long list of... Oh, God, get out of here with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, like, long list of what they like. So, somebody asked this question on the Patreon. So, is there, like, Putting a spam filter? the filter? on there. <laughs> yeah, he goes, this is what like, I wait Here's I the blueprints. <laughs> BMI, all that. Their function because they were complaining about the generic messages that Lil was talking about, where they just like list all the things they want and just spam a bunch of women with that. Is there some mechanism for that? Yes, there is. If you're copying and pasting messages, it's very cool. If that's happening at a certain speed, then that's obviously automated. Will kick you off. It's, it's funny. It's like someone said, "Well, can't you just kick them off? Even if it's not spam, but just lazy and boring." <laughs> but like the copy paste message, you know, maybe that's like a new product is like just really bad daters or really lazy. But you know, these guys that send. And by the way, I'm married with two little kids. I was single in New York City for 15 years. So I feel like I have fucking earned my, like, I know girls, I have been there. I get it. But I'm on dating apps around the world at any, like right now I'm on like 24. And so you'll notice when the guy sends, you'll glance at it first, like, oh, this is like a nice, thoughtful message. He wrote like more than, hey. But then when you read it, it could have sent it to anyone. Like, hey, you seem nice. I like that smile. I thought we could get together and go for coffee. A little about me. I like travel, blah, blah, blah. And it's just so boring and says nothing. And it's probably a copy paste. If they don't say something specific about your profile or comment about something, I think it's lazy. I tend to say like, <laughs> don't engage. Yep, yeah, that's yeah, right. It's on like, my- he's just doing, this is like a bird shot. Yeah, yeah, point, yeah. You know, he's just like, yeah, I'm going to. 
Do this to 200 You're out here, you're like, you're trying to fucking get your dick wet. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Again, that's one of the things. I, like, guys are not generally on these apps to, like, like it's more of a, I wouldn't say, I was going to say it's more of, like, a feature than a bug, but it's more like a bug that they end up getting married exactly. in a relationship. They're on there for the features of, like, just, Getting their dick and to and pretend that these apps, the backbone of them, isn't just horny dudes trying to fuck. <laughs> yeah. That's what your whole platform's whole built thing. on. Whole thing. The entire fucking thing. On the female dating strategy, uh, best practices tip. Yes, good, <laughs> good. I actually had the opposite problem for a while, and I don't know why this is, and it could just be, you know, whoever I was swiping on, where men would find some very small, minuscule thing on my profile to send me big paragraphs of arguments, and that was weird. But I, at least I knew that they weren't just, like, copy and pasting, because they were very specifically wanting to argue with me about things that I was very curious. And it would be so random. It would just be, like, my specific TV show preference. And they'd explain to me, like, why it was inferior to something else. And it was just, like... <laughs> Oh, God. Did they get that? And they probably read it on some. I mean, they're trying to, like, neg you without even going after your physical appearance. Yeah. That actually seems like probably a good guy move. Well, you start low, and then you work your way Yeah, out. but yeah. it's, like, honestly, in terms of, like, the thing to start off on, like, to be like, that's ah, a silly TV show choice. Like, they're just trying to be flirting. Yeah. Nonsense. You know, hey, here's what you should do. Pick a fight and make her feel inferior about her, you know, stated loves or desire, whatever, on her profile. So annoying. Yeah, and I think this is before we had the double match on OkCupid, too. I love how oh. they think that's, like, a preconceived concept. Like, he's like, oh, I'm going to make her feel less than or something. The dude's just talking. Yeah, he's here. just talking. He's it's like, just a strat. Like, you want to talk about strategies. That is a real strategy. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to go after after like um, so one of her hobbies, not her looks or anything. And then just kind of like, you know, yeah, get a little, a little banter, banter. Yeah, get some exactly. banter going. Exactly. Okay. Because it used to just be like the single match, right? Yes. Wow. I love it. You know the, you you do know the product. I love it. Wow. You've really been single for two decades, huh? Wow. Yeah, I was on it before and I was in a relationship and then I was off it. And then like, I like recently rejoined, but yeah. So. I'm glad you rejoined. You have to tell me how things go or don't go or what you like and what you hate. And the other really great feature. So this is, I'm promising you, I'm not trying to give like an okay, keep it out, but I'm just saying this because I. No, please carry on. <laughs> I'm hoping on in the ether that people like catch on to what was really useful for me because I actually moved states. So the other thing that was really great was like looking to see like what was what kind of guys are around and what kinds of things were around in the state that I was moving to. You can search by zip code a lot easier on OkCupid, which has actually been a lifesaver, especially even the like around the world feature on OkCupid. But I like that like I could actually scope out the environment I was moving into prior to me moving, which none of the other apps let you do that. It's all like based on your current location. Yeah, we'll let you do that. That's awesome. That's a great tip. It gives you an idea of the city. But yeah. like what? She, was she like not going to move there potentially? Yeah, I like, don't like. I don't know. Also, there's, there's got to be good dick in every city. Yeah, I assume. as long as you're in like a major city, well, there could be course. one good dick. I mean, if you can, it's you at that point. At that <laughs> point, it's you. Yeah. I had a job that I traveled, so that was like that was clutch because I never knew where, what I was getting into like prior to that. But going on OK Cupid, I at least had like okay, here's p people taking pictures in front of this monument, or like at least if I was talking to some guy, I could meet someone and they like they would. Have you know discretions of certain things in their profile that was like really useful and that was something that was unique I think to okay, keep it. That's she's really cool. Uh, that's awesome here. I think What's that? she's using the apps and like and she's like swiping as much as she can in area, seeing what she can kind of pick up. Oh and yeah, then yeah, fucking yeah. moving on to the dude. Next. Right when Tinder came out, like what it must have been close to ten years ago or whatever, and I just become recently single, and then me and Ryan we found this app. It was like an extra add-on app from like the app store. It wasn't a paid app, but it was. It was because Tinder didn't introduce that feature for f several years where you could swipe in a different yeah. location. But this one figured out a way to trick Tinder. So we would be like going to, and it was, there was no swipe uh, limit yeah, limit back at then. the time either. So it's like, I remember one time we went to Ottawa and <laughs> Ryan literally swiped right on every woman in Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> like a week before we got there. And then you set it up. You just start laying the foundation. Totally. And then you, whatever matches, then you start filtering at that point. Yeah. But you're like, all the heavy lifting had been done, but it was crazy. You're like We <laughs> swiped right heavy. on every woman in Ottawa. <laughs> Dude, those were the days. <laughs> the days. I think that is still unique to us. And it's funny, we, we're starting to see people do that to Canvas to vote a little bit. And uh, that's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it's really interesting. And I also think that if you are far right, you're going to leave OkCupid pretty quickly because we send messages like, hey, in response to reproductive rights rollbacks, you can add a pro-choice badge to your profile. Every person that has pro-choice badge, we will donate a dollar Planned Parenthood, but also it increases like your chances of having like likes. Anyway, if you're really, you know, far right, you're going to get turned off by that. And so it ends up helping self-select people out of the experience that whose values and stances on issues may not align with your own or what, you know, most American women feel about certain issues. But I like that. I will make a note and give that to my head of product uh, to say, hey, let's make sure we keep that on. Uh, good feedback. 
So I think we've talked a little bit about the user experience and I kind of gave an overarching discussion already about like the types of things that women want, like from a consumer product or research standpoint, like, do you ever feel like the interests are adversarial between what men want and what women want on the app? Like, do you have mechanisms in place to kind of like balance it out? Yes and no. You know, what you do see things like a guy says, I'm looking for a serious relationship and you don't have to answer this, but if you want kids, don't want kids, you can say, I'm not sure. Yes, no, definitely one day, maybe, and you can also skip it. We, we will see people that are like looking for serious, want kids, and then their behavior indicates something very, very different. It's hard to police that because some people has a good reputation in like the tech world because the engineering is good. And what also does happen is you have people that are incredibly introverted or incredibly shy, and it is hard to fill out that profile. And it is hard to know like what to say to people. And so sometimes that's the reality of what's going on. You know, what we try to do again is like, we have this feature in the app called iCupid, but it kind of tells you hey, here's what the data shows about your profile and here are like some things that would help increase your chances of matching whatever. So try to arm you have with good data on what you're doing and what may work. It is hard though to say, okay, are you, you know, We've not figured out how to do explicitly a better job of like, this guy is just looking to hook up and pull around. It is a less of an issue that would okay keep with another app. Again, because if you're not looking for- No, it's not. <laughs> something serious and you're not it's engaged not. in like what's going on in the world, you're just not going to put up with us because we will not swipe and match without going through a certain number of steps on the profile. We will not let you do it. And that has cost us money. It's why we're not as big as other apps, but we know that gives a better experience. You know, I think what, what you point out is also fair. Like we are a business. And so we, you know, we're, we're not a nonprofit. We are a business. We are a for-profit business. We, we live in very capitalist America. However, I will say, and I, this has been my experience been okay, you know, almost five years that we will make decisions that cost us money that, you know, will get you off pun intended, like get you off, get you off the app because that's the world that we live in. And it's also, there's a real benefit when people say like, what kind of fucking business is this? I have oh, I no someone. clue. <laughs> Trying to cut out. I guess some it doesn't your... run my checks. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> They're like, we're going to cut out most of our, our huge chunk of the people who might spend money. Like, on but this. to actively like to admit to go, yeah, this is worse than all the other apps. Yeah. <laughs> we know it. And it didn't work out, but they were really great. And, you know, we're still friends or I had a good experience or I felt like I could talk about my passion for sustainability. And, you know, that didn't feel weird here. And so I think when you're out there, you know, how are you feeling in that experience? What's working for you? How are you finding folks? Because I'll also say this, you know, women will say men are so appearance based and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah. And that's by the way, that's true. That's true. But then I'll say, let me just like, you know, open up your app and let me like, just pretend like I'm not here. And they will swipe as quickly as those guys will. Meaning they're not clicking into the profile. They're not taking a minute. So I will also say that women are also not giving the mindfulness and the slowdown, you know, if you're looking for a serious relationship that they maybe think they are, that they, you know, even my own friends, even my own single friends, I'm like, you are going so fast. You are making a snap decision on that guy's picture. And I know that you want people to take more time with your profile. And I know that when I read your profile and it's so funny and it's so interesting, I'm like, oh, I would like to make that with you. So why don't you give that, you know, give that time and that attention to other people. And by the way, that's the thing that I also tell folks if they think that they're guilty of that is like, you know, sit with your friend and don't look at the profiles, but have her read, you know, maybe she does like the first vet. <laughs> it's like, oh, this that's so, that is the worst fucking advice. <laughs> it's like, here we go. Okay, let me read you this guy's profile. Okay. He's, uh, I'm a Wall Street lawyer, partner at the thing. And she goes, oh, that sounds good. And he goes, he looks like Danny DeVito. And you go, yeah, <laughs> yeah no. No, thanks. No. I no. almost died down the street. He wasn't even down the street. He was three states away. That's where I was like, you know what? I'm deleting this. <laughs> Oh, God. I have no idea. That's what was so weird about it. I was like, maybe they super swiped on me or something. But I still was like, I feel like, again, as a consumer, I like my apps to filter out things that would never, ever, ever work, right? Like, I don't ask for much. Oh, like the guy in Kansas who is living in a van is like, not your speed. Yeah, it's like, how would he even get here? In his van. <laughs> you know? I don't know. But... So <laughs> They're driving his van. <laughs> hey, at least he has a car. You know, no, not these gas prices. Not with these gas prices right now. <laughs> Sorry, but I think we're all trying to stay home. <laughs> So, okay. So with that, how do you guys measure like your success as a dating app? If you're not necessarily doing it just based on like, how do you characterize success for OkCupid? Okay, wait, and wait, for wait. What do we think is going to be their measurement for success on this? Uh, I'm going to say, I, I wonder if they can track like, because you can't track if people get married. Yeah, successful can, relationships yeah. and stuff. Successful yeah. relationships. But mm -hmm. really, a sex, successful relationship is maybe a marriage. Yeah. But how do you track that? I guess you would track, like, maybe lack of re-downloads. Whoever, if people delete and then don't. But then that's also just pe maybe your app fucking sucks Yeah, maybe. But, like, you're not even a top 10 dating app. So yeah. it's like, that doesn't really tell you anything. Other than, mm. I don't know. 
it's gonna be some like bullshit rah rah thing. Yeah, yeah. Like that's not a metric that oh, can be that can be. Yeah, we can't measure quantified this. in any yeah. way. No. Okay. Either both the app and also the users. Yeah. So one is we call it happy delete. So if you go to delete an app, often usually that happens. You know, you may have that conversation like, hey, okay, are we going off the apps? Like this is going somewhere, right? We're we going off the apps. We're we gonna leave that. And when you go to do that, we say, and this is maybe our most important metric. We say, hey, hey, before you go, could you do you mind telling us? you know, why you're leaving. And we have oh, yeah, options. Something. And one option is I'm over it. I'm over dating. I'm taking a break. Another option is I met somebody not on OkCupid. Another option is I met somebody on OkCupid. And then it's like, I don't want to tell you, fuck off. <laughs> and we often also know what, you know what that means. So we call it a happy delete if it's I met someone on OkCupid. And that's really, really, really important. It's a little tougher a dating app though. And this is one of those things that I wouldn't have thought about until I worked here is if you think about that relationship, right? So you meet someone, you want a few dates, you're probably still on the app. What a lot of people do is they'll stop using the app but they won't delete it. And we don't know what's going on. We don't have a diary or journal. We say, oh, you know, we're on our seventh date or you meeting the parents or whatever it is. And then you'll come back and delete the app when it's getting to a serious, or again, like you've had that conversation. But even that, we don't, you know, did you move in together? Did you want to get married and you got engaged? You know, it's one of those interesting things where you you just don't always know like what happens after. But happy delete is a a really important one. In the biz, in the industry, we also talk about things like two ways, four ways and contact exchanges. And those are not sexual positions. Those are a two way is if you go back and forth, he messages you, you message him back four way, it keeps going. Contact exchange is really important. That tends to be almost always is like at least a good metric because it means you're taking the conversation offline. It doesn't always mean you're going on a date, but it can mean that. At different points, we've also turned on questions like, hey, did you go on a date with so-and-so? Did you go on a date with so-and-so? And that's a little bit hard because you want to get the data. You want to know. You guys had, you know, you had a contact exchange. We want to know if you went on a date. How was the date? But then the other, the flip side also is you don't want people to feel bad. Like, no, I didn't go on the date. And now I feel worse because you asked me if I went on the date or maybe you did go on the date and the date was terrible. Like, how did it go? So it, it is this funny balance of I want to know what's happening because I want to be a better app. I want to, should we have more filters? Should we have more questions? Are we showing you people that you're potentially interested in talking to you or making out with like, or whatever? the difference between, because if there's like a guy on a guy's podcast and goes, yeah. so how do you like measure like the effectiveness of your app, the success? And he goes, so there's this thing called revenue and there's this thing called profit and yeah. when those numbers are higher then our app's doing great we're killing it over here when we're, <laughs> we're all making money yeah when we're rubbing money on our nipples <laughs> and fucking dive into it like scrooge mcduck that's when we're doing great great yeah just on killing. the other hand you don't want to be too invasive and we already ping you with things like hey you know you know like the notifications push notifications right you go in your phone and it's often what you turn off so that whatever app is not telling you every two minutes that there's a deal on uber eats like i get it it's great thank you very much but you know you want that also to stay on because if so and so messages you back or you have a new message or you have new likes we want to tell you that so you can you know check it out so it is a little bit difficult those are you know are people on the app because liquidity is a thing too again liquidity is like a bit of like a you know a biz term um it seems chemical almost but are there people here for you to talk to? Because you should not have been shown a guy three states away. You know, are there enough people in this town? And I know Cupid is, you know, and tends to be more popular in cities. So I have actually a comment slash question about why I think I was showing this person. One of the repeated complaints that a lot of other women of color have on there is that sometimes if you swipe on someone who's like your same race, then they'll show you everyone of that same race. And it will basically disregard all of the other factors because once again, it doesn't seem like it's values more so than how a person looks. And then you'll see everyone of that same race. And so I think... I'm guessing that's what happened <laughs> because I was looking at that like, what? <laughs> I don't get that though because she says it was on Tinder. She said Cinderella, so it must yeah. be Tinder. But then like, why would Tinder show you someone from three states away? Don't you have like a radius? Yeah, no, that makes no sense. It doesn't that make any work. sense. Unless it was someone who they were doing like the travel swiping. And the algorithm thing she's talking about where they show you people the same race I, on TikTok <laughs> I have like burner accounts just for getting so I can get like a fresher algorithm. Yeah, yeah. And I've used different profile pictures. And one's like a white chick and one's a black dude. And the one that's a black dude, I got like all black creator content. Really? Yeah, like all. Yeah, that's fucking pretty interesting. They're like black guy. He likes black guys. We'll send him black guys. (laughs) Yeah. Birds of a feather, I guess. So that's what I think is is the issue on that one. And once again, it didn't happen on OK Keep It happened on another one. That just, just that sucks. And I'm sorry that happened. And yes, I do think it is a good thing to ask yourself, what is this app asking me in order to determine who to show to me? You don't want them to only ask location, which in your case didn't even work. Is there algorithm? Yeah, it's confusing. And I think that's part of why, I, I know you're not necessarily deep into the weeds of the algorithm, but I think that's part of why so many women don't know how to use the app because they're like, I don't understand why I'm being shown the things that I'm being shown, right? Yeah, totally. Totally. I mean, it sounds like she said the guy's homeless, but it does sound like now the more I'm thinking about it, 
He's planning on coming to that city. And yeah. He's just laying some groundwork. Exactly. He just put his thing down. And also, I mean, like, he has money to travel at the very least. Yeah, but she's saying he's homeless. Maybe a senator. But they call everybody homeless. Uh, yeah. The, a senator might have given him, like, a plane ticket being yeah. like, hey, you got to take <laughs> off to San Francisco. We're not, you have no place here anymore. No. <laughs> I understand it's not always an exact science. What has occurred to me, and at least, like, how I already explained it to you, is that it just seems that they're very much trying to balance the interest between men and women on that app, especially if it's, like, a quote-unquote meat market app like Tinder, and that sometimes women come out on the losing end of the stick where they're favoring showing you a bunch of guys you would never be with just to have, first, either give you more options or give them more options. And even paying for the premium features, which I did as part of my, quote, research, I just was bombarded with guys that I'm like, I, this would take me forever, like, thousands of men, it would take me forever to go through all of this. So I think that's what it seems like for me. Yeah, it sounds like that was your experience. And it's interesting that even paying for that premium experience didn't make it easier. In some ways, it made it even harder because then there was so much to look at. It was overwhelming. Yeah. So with OkCupid, what I really liked was like, I don't remember, it was like the, either the popular stack or it was like they give you stacks of men yeah. that are like already pre-filtered, right? So what I really liked, and it was pretty low cost, I think it was like two bucks, but it was like filtered by things that I would actually be interested in, right? And that was actually way more useful for me than having, I think I paid for the premium on Bumble and as well as Tinder and just like having a bunch of guys like me. I'm like, I don't Damn, women are paying for dating apps? I didn't know that at all. Man, Fuck, I man. guess that's why they want they don't want to do the coffee date. She's yeah, already invested. She's like, I'm like, paying for everything. She's got a thirty five dollar subscription. That's crazy. Don't give a shit about a good ninety percent of these men. So this didn't help me at all. So <laughs> that's really cool. And yes, I'm glad that you got you even know like yeah, the term is stacked. So you go in okay cupid. And again, it's it came out of real feedback from daters. And it was I see that I have this like endless deck of cards. Again, like the stack of people to swipe left or right on. But can you just like section them? Again, like you walk into a bar and like what if you could say at the bar, here's everybody, it's told us their pro choice, which is one of our stacks. This stack is organized by people that we're recommending because we think they're a good fit for you. Here's another stack that is in your area or recently online, which is also another good thing because we turn off your profile. If you don't log in, I think it's two weeks. It's around that time. If you don't log in for two weeks, we stop showing your profile to people because I don't want, if I'm single, I don't want you to show me profile people that have not been on the app recently. Like what a letdown, you know, like they're taking a break. Maybe they met someone, whatever it is. They're not engaged. So that's really good feedback to hear. I'm going to give that. I'm going to also give that to my head of product. It does like siphon them off. And again, like I like the pro choice stack. So I, you know, I jumped into it and I'm looking at like who's in there and obviously you're hotter if you're for reproductive rights and that's like okay i'll start here i'll you're start here because that's right. the other thing too is you're i think dating right. app, yeah i mean dating is kind of scary and you can be vulnerable and then can be really overwhelming it doesn't feel intimate it doesn't feel like there's community there often and so how do you like pull out those things that will make it feel like community and it will make it feel oh i'm actually getting a sense of who you are maybe you're not for me but i'm getting a sense of that or maybe you know maybe you are maybe that i want to like get to know you better not Can on I a coffee ever tell you my one abortion joke no uh, one abortion joke and it's like i think it's hot when a girl's had an abortion and if a chick's ever like yeah i had an abortion once i'm like oh you keep talking like that you're gonna kill my baby one day <laughs> <laughs> keep it up okay okay so i guess with this last part of the conversation i'd like to i think get into your best practices tips and tricks about how to use the apps like this the stuff that um <laughs> people ask because yeah Go to the gym. It seems to me that it's partially part of the user frustration with apps is like our ignorance about actually how to use it, right? Which is part of why I was kind of inspired to try to write an ebook on it. And I don't know when that's coming out because we're kind of busy, but like the idea that like, okay, we need some kind of user education about like how to find what you're looking for in the apps in so far that it does exist. Like assuming that there are, you know, if you're a average quote unquote woman who just wants a relationship with an average type man, there's some discussion about like, if you listen to all the incels online and sorry, we wait, we traffic in that language of like incels. Oh, I listened to the recent, even like the fam style. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I'm familiar. Yeah, so these women they were they were referred to as fem cells. Yeah, because they're they're not getting laid. But yeah. they are. They, it's not really a true like, because they're not involuntarily celibate. Like, yeah. there's no such thing as an involuntarily celibate woman. Yeah, no, she's voluntarily celibate. Yeah, she just she, doesn't like what's the option. Exactly, she could go out and fuck if she wanted. Of to. course, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. always somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas guys, there might really no. Not yeah, be. I've heard of fem cells before. They're yeah, they're just like they're fem cells. Mm, mm, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, okay, so one of the complaints they've had is like, I know OkCupid used to publish data, or actually I think they still do, but maybe not as frequently, but like publish the data studies. And there's a really infamous study that came out of OkCupid that showed that like, oh, 80% of the women are only attracted to 20% of the men. And they've been using that as like their Bible ever since. By the way, that's literally like a mathematical law of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> like, not the 80-20 rule is like yeah. the Pareto principle. It's like literally the universe. Wait, what's the Pareto principle? The Pareto principle. It's uh this like Italian mathematician. It's basically the 80-20 rule. He like figured it out like, you know, fucking 1600s or something yeah just the 80 20 rule that like it's just like everything kind of shakes down 
to 80 20 it's just like you know like in comedy 20 percent of all the comedians basically oh. get all 80 percent of all the money oh okay. and the fans right yeah, yeah, yeah whereas the bottom 80 percent are basically getting 20 20 percent it's like and it works like that in, in everything ev- yo the 80 20 okay i'm getting smarter on yeah, this yeah, one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like is that i don't know actually maybe i'll ask your opinion q 80 20 rule is sexist I know, because i always wonder like <laughs> it seemed to me that it might have just been a bit of a data misinterpretation or like if we're really at that point as a society like what does that say about us if like if truly only 80 percent of women are attracted to 20 percent of the men i don't think that's the case i think it just has to do with the way the app was yeah yeah correct it's not that way anymore i know the blog post that you're referring to and it's before my time but yes i think there were a number of reasons why i think how the data was interpreted what dating was like then and also i think okay cupid has always been a little bit of a step ahead but i also one of the only apps born and raised in new york city and that does i think you can feel that in the product but i think the data would and does show that that's not the case now but yes i love giving tips and tricks because i do think it's no one has ever said to me i've been doing this for a while now and i talk to single people every day all day i love it i genuinely like talking about this issue and i like trying to connect people and no one has ever said to me i've got it down and, and so and i've been doing this five years i've had you know tens of thousands of conversations about dating and relationships and sex and so here's a couple of like my favorites from like an insider perspective one is like actually put the time in and women are like extremely guilty of this just like the guys i'm really trying to find someone and, and again i think you guys hit on this the why behind our views of ourselves and our views of dating and our views of men and misogyny like why all of those things happen it's related to that that you know part of what we and i, I am not a sociologist or anthropologist but i work with really amazing women who are and by the way we almost only work with women in, in that space of academia and research and anthropologists and sociologists and all the things to understand the why behind things and how do we use the app and the technology to address it and to make it easier. But people don't put the time in. And women will say to me, I, I'm having no luck. And I'm like, okay, tell me how much time and energy you're putting into this. And like, let's talk about that for a minute. And they'll, I'll say, you know, five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, you know, 10 minutes what every the other day. Fuck and they'll say, is this lady doing with her microphone? I have no idea. <laughs> the, the, the production is not something one of their stronger cases. She's just fucking slapping around that all over the That might be Savannah. Gun. She hasn't <laughs> spoken in an hour. Oh, true. She just kind of. Yeah. Been sitting there. Yeah, so I don't know what's going on. Someone said that they met their wife on OK Cupid. Oh. Someone good. said, oh, uh, I can't. Ammonium metavenidate. I am a bit behind, but I met my wife on OK Cupid. Okay, good for yeah, you. So that's Say, I don't know, 10 minutes a month. And I said, okay, well, that's your first problem. So one thing is, like, you should put the time and energy in. I get- OK Native super- says, is Che ready to break? Doesn't sound like it. It sounds no. like Lev was just being soft. No, this is like, I, man, crazy chicks. I yeah, fucking yes. roll around in crazy chicks yeah, all yeah. This, day. This is your dude. wheel. This is your wheelhouse. Yeah. I have this theory. <laughs> <laughs> that I, you know, women work out. We, we do so much to achieve all these other things in our life. And we don't always put in that time and energy. And this doesn't have, I mean, I work at a dating app. It doesn't have to be a dating app. But are you putting yourself in situations where you're going to meet someone and you're going to meet someone that you have some compatibility with? So that's one thing. Mm-hmm. Another thing is like, make sure you're on the right app for what you want. Tinder is big in like almost every city in the world, but some apps are not that popular in other cities. So it may not be the right one for you. And also, you know, it, are politics and social issues important to you? You know, you should get on OKCupid. We're free. But what is the right thing for you in your area is a really important thing. Here's another like insider hacky tip, which is, you know how when you are new to like a cell phone carrier is when they treat you the best? Dating apps are a little bit like that. And the data point is that 70% of daters roughly will set their profile and then never update it. And when you update your profile, even if you add like a few words, like, you know, not like self summary, like a little about me, you say like, these are the trips I'm taking this year or shows I recently binged. I will, you know, something like that. Even if you just add a few words, the algorithm lights up and like thinks you're a new user and you will be shown to more people. But also, oh, that's there a you great go. Hack. There you Write go. that one down, boys. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting in the push game. I, I imagine that probably is the case for all the other apps, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just if you update it, then it just shows. Dude, we're fucking. All right, so we actually learned something of value that, here yes, today. Yes, okay. This is a, this is the, that is, tech, unfortunately for them, both a female and a male dating strategy. Yes, too. absolutely. I'm yeah. Dating. And men are going to weaponize that way Oh, weaponize this immediately. <laughs> I'm terrorizing on there now. All my shit's getting updated weekly updates, bro. Yeah, dude, you literally just take your, your whole thing and just put it into chat GPT and be like, say <laughs> This exact same thing in different words. Dude, chat GBT <laughs> for dating apps make me the most like appealing dating profile for like X type of woman. Yeah, and be yeah. like, give me 50 of them so you constantly refresh with new. Yes. Oh my God. The right. profile adds this like freshness and this like, oh, this person was just here. They're clearly engaged. They're clearly like trying to meet somebody. We saw a lot of that when we're getting vaccinated. Also, like if you're anti-vax, you're probably not an OkCupid because we push that shit so hard. And we're like, you're more likely to like find love and, you know, whatever. And so, but it was, you know, if you saw someone like, hey, boosted, uh, vaxxed and boosted and ready to go. I'm like, oh, this person was here in recent. So add stuff to your profile. Here's another. I mean, good tip for guys, regardless of how you feel about 
the vaccine. Just put it in there. Yeah, oh, vaccine yeah, yeah. boosted, ready to go. Yeah, you're just you ready. know that you're gonna get a ton of things. And oh, like, nobody's for sure. checking uh, vaccination status at this point. No, right? no, no. no. Whether well, you got your card on you or something. Yeah, like, like where's your card? You? What do you got? And you're like, I don't know. Johnson Johnson. Yeah, I, don't just, I don't remember. Exactly. We're just trying to get it in, boys. <laughs> Fucking. Go, what, you don't remember. Whatever scam you got to pull, <laughs> <laughs> you fucking get it done. Data point that I think is a little bit interesting. If you only get on your app once a week, do it on Sundays. Sundays are the busiest day. And that's like across every. That's today. Yeah. Hey. In every category. It's really interesting. You know, why partly is because Sundays are like chill days. You are like, you know, maybe like nursing your hangover. You're just hanging out. But it feels also like a little less pressure, a little whatever. A lot of women will say, I don't like to be online on like a, a Saturday because I don't want people to think like I'm going to, you know, meet up that night. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for like something serious. So get online on Sundays. Other to other like good tips. Like if you have more than four pictures or more increases your chance of having a match on OkCupid. If you have the pro-choice badge, you're twice as likely to get matches. <laughs> Again, I think that's- put that pro-choice badge on there. Right, Absolutely. But those are some of my tips. I also do- well, I wonder what you get for pro-choice Ukraine and uh, vaccine. Oh, dude. And that might be too much. I think you're going too like, far. Like you're going too far. Yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. just going to get this chick who like won't put out. And when she <laughs> does, it's like the pussy just <laughs> sucks, bro. She doesn't <laughs> suck dick because she's like, I don't do that. Yeah. If, if, if chicks are like proud of their dick sucking game that's fucking uh, that's a real truth. yeah yeah put that badge on there encourage <laughs> people to slow down and if that means you have your friend hold your phone and you don't look at the photos but they read you a little bit of the profile and like yeah i like that or no i do encourage people to slow down and i also tell women like if you come across a guy that's interesting send him a message there are a lot of we have a lot of people on okq but a lot of men that are really lovely kind interesting humans they also may be shy and a little introverted and you know if you see someone interesting drop him a line and then my last tip and then i'll shut up is on that profile this like so okq profiles are more robust than others we want that we want it that way we don't want it to turn into like an instagram where it's like or you know or a tinder where you feel like there's a few words and that's it but you know here's what you don't want to do on the profile is don't don't do like just like you know an easygoing laid-back girl looking for her partner in crime like it just says nothing i don't even know ah you- so that's what the ladies would call you you heard of the term of pick me yeah, yeah that's yeah. the enemy of the female dating strategy is the pick me oh girls. they don't like pick me girls hate pick me girls because like pick me girls are all just like yeah pick me and then they get married and have kids and nice life and yeah, they're like they're going against. They're scabs. They're scabs. <laughs> Dude, oh my god! They hate. They hate. They hate me's. chicks who try to become appealing to men. Yeah, that's like worst they thing you could ever me's. do. Well, because it fucks them over too. Yeah, because they're like, what now? I gotta like fucking take care of my body and learn what who a Star Wars character is. Like, oh, <laughs> they hate pick me. Even respond to like it just and guys do this too, but like please don't do that. And also, what's really happening often is a guy is looking for something to ask you about. And so take the time to put that out there. And if people worry too much, like I'm not I want to be funny, but like I'm trying too hard. And like just like you just, just like throw that out the window. And one way to do that that, that tends to help people is to list what, what could be albums that changed my life, books that changed my life, shows I binged in COVID, favorite trips ever. Like it doesn't always have to be like, oh a French philosopher or like, you know, here's my take on liberal feminism it could be podcasts that i could not live without it can be a lot of things but when you put that out there you're increasing the chances that a guy who because often like those great guys are a little bit shy and we don't think about that enough but i work with like engineers i feel like i work with so many of that type and so you're just making it a little bit easier and you're increasing the chances that they're like oh my gosh you also asperger's <laughs> <laughs> just like a <"Hey>, build <laughs> i build things I don't talk good. Oh, love <laughs> this obscure band. I love that obscure band. Did you see them in December in Austin? You know, you're increasing the chances of that because dating apps are a little bit about like, what's the icebreaker? Like, how are you going to make it easier for somebody to reach out and say hi, which is why we have like suggested prompts or, and we're even, you know, leaning into that on the political and social side, but don't feel like you have to be like so smart and funny and clever and witty and like not trying too hard. Just like put stuff out there. You can always change it. Do change it. Like, but the more you put out there, the more you're increasing the chances that Guys need help. Like they do. They need help. They they need help. So make it a little easier for them to like say something. Yeah, we noticed they need help. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually will say that. <laughs> yeah. It is a good idea. When I was using online dating, one of the things that did make it a little easier for both parties was Yo, I just- didn't just cluing in that this so all the stuff you've heard about these chicks where they're like anti-trans and all this kind of stuff you've already heard that on the pod oh yes yeah, and this chick's mouth. coming from ok cupid so is ok cupid like anti-trans and no like- no they probably didn't tell like that part they're not against transgender people like they're not like you know kill all trans people but they're very <laughs> much like you know trans women shouldn't compete in women's sports they're turfs right. they're turfs yeah they're yeah. just they're just like women biological women outrank the transgender, transgender word. Yeah. yeah like, if that, we're doing the ranking system. They're just yeah. ranking. They go, yeah, they're like, there's, we, we'll let them do some stuff, but like, they can't take <laughs> we'll over. We'll let them do they some stuff. They can't take over. Like, they're not better than us. Include, you know, 
some kind of like opening or like, you know, oh, if you message me, tell me about something like I'll basically give them like a prompt to, you know, somewhere in the profile. I really don't like the people who are like, oh, tell me the code word, which is like lemonade or something to prove that you read my profile. Like, I don't know. I don't like when people sometimes men do that too. And it just seems really like hostile and kind of jaded. I think a better way of getting the same thing of like, if you want someone to show that they've read your profile somewhere in the middle of my profile, be like, if you message me, tell me about like a project that you did recently or something, uh, whatever, right? You know, give them a prompt. And then that shows that they read your profile. It also, you know, it's like invitation to approach kind of thing. And it also makes you seem more interesting and not like bitter and jaded. Yes, I like that. Or another one that I like, because I agree. And people do get really, um, yeah, you can feel how jaded and frustrated, annoyed they are. And it's like, you'll have to make sure you say this. So I know you read my profile. Yeah, it just seems so hostile. I'm like, really? Like, is that how you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I... Walk dates are for dogs. That's, that's the one. That's the title of their episode. <laughs> Yeah, it's an older one. That's the walk dates are for dogs. Yeah, that's that's the one where they said no, uh, no walk dates, no coffee dates. Have you ever considered that maybe you're a dog? <laughs> <laughs> and they have not. <sighs> I just they don't want people like that. Putting that in, like, oh, you might reach out, like, tell me something you're working on, or something like, tell me, even putting on your profile, like, tell me where's the best margarita in Austin, or whatever, like something, you know, what's your favorite dive in town, or something like that. And then, yeah, you're making it, you're helping them because they do need it. <laughs> they do. So, I have one last pie in the sky question. This is a suggestion from one of our users. What do you think about dating app term limits? <laughs> because she was remarking that, like, <laughs> I love it. Some of these guys need help getting the fuck off this app. And she's like, they don't want to. Yeah, they need it, man. Yeah, they're like, it's just. Either because they're not having success. You know, she was just wondering, like, do you guys either have a mechanism in place? Or is that something you would explore helping the perpetual users on there to get off of the app? Or just like, I know actually now you do kind of, you hide their profile if they're on there with inactivity for a certain amount of time. But like starting to kind of push users who maybe are not either using the active app effectively or if they're really, really <laughs> not having any success. Like, what do you do to help them, I guess, is the is the question. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it is hard. You start to get into territory, which is interesting. It's hard to know, right? And then you have to actually go into like, you know, millions of daters around the world. So and you can't do that where you can't go into like every profile and say, oh, wow, you're just a terrible human or you really need help. So one of the things we do is like with every profile, whether you pay or you're a free user, we show, we tell you, hey, here's what would help. If you added one more picture, you're going to increase your chances of a match by 30% or answer more okay, cupid questions because this increases the likelihood that you and, you know, another person have something in common and you'll find something that you care about. We will also for daters that it's clear they're having trouble. And we know this if, if they're not having mutual matches or contact exchanges or four ways or, you know, some of those other metrics that we, we look at, we'll send them notes like, hey, because sometimes what happens is people have so many preferences and filters that I, I don't have anybody that fits criteria. And by the way, women will do this either in the app or with their own list. It's like, I only want six feet tall. I want to go to university. I want to go to car. Da, 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 da. And like, you've just eliminated like 90% of the men like that are out there. And so we will send messages and say, hey, we think we've got some more people they might be interested in. Would you consider increasing your distance? You know, I'm from the Midwest. So some, you know, some of my friends have had some luck doing that of saying, okay, you don't have to be within a one mile radius or a five mile radius, but you can be a little bit further. And like New York City, that means like, you know, you can be going from like Brooklyn to New Jersey. So people in New York are always like hesitant to do that. But in other parts of the world, that makes sense. So we'll tell them, hey, can you think about checking your, your preferences or settings? We think we have a few people that, you know, might be compatible with. Question with that. So I wonder if this is another area where like men's interest and women's interest might be misaligned. Because I tend to think that like women tend to only swipe on the guys they're actually interested in, whereas men are more likely to cast a wide net, so to speak. Like, is that another situation where, okay, women makes her criteria yes. really, really, really narrow. And then all the guys that are swiping on her are like the 90% of her are going to be like outside of what she wants. But then it's like, is it then on her to like expand it if that's not what she really wants? Or like, again, is it like against the consumer interest? Or like She's kind of answering why it's like women who don't you know, have a wire net or just going to be single. Like, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's like, if you want to cast a very small net, you got to be a rocket. Yeah, like, you oh, gotta yeah exactly. A, yeah. yeah. You got to just be top 20, even 10%. Maybe. Yeah. Like a conflicting consumer interest. If like she wants to narrow it down, they want to expand it. How do you like then balance it? Is it more like you suggest to them? Yeah. Like expand your distance or. Yeah, no, but exactly. And that does happen. And this is probably true at all the apps that men tend to say yes more than women. And women are more explicit and narrow in what they set their preferences to. Again, like the nightclub bar analogy of like, you're always looking at your gender balance. You know, the, the people that are that are straight, obviously we look at different things for the LGBTQ daters that we support. So you might, you know, 
know, we might say expand your, if for guys that are not getting as many matches or they're not going on, if it looks like they're not going on dates, we'll say, hey, try, try this or try, you know, try this filter. But it is a little bit hard. You know, sometimes it frankly, like when I sit with people and I'll look at their profile and I'll say, hey, tell me what moves you. Like, what do you think is a good fit for you? I don't love the expression, like, what are you looking for? But like, you know, if like, what do you think is a good fit? What do you tend to be attracted to? <laughs> it's like, what moves you? It's like. I don't know, big tits. <laughs> <laughs> like asking that to a guy. Yeah, like, <laughs> what moves you? I don't know. Yeah, you get like um, a deep throat. You yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, fat ass. Yeah. <laughs> Does he's always? He goes no, good. like like about the personality. You go. Thanks. I don't fucking care. Quiet, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, in terms of like personality and ter- well, you know these different things, and then what they do on the app is not the same thing as what they're telling me so i also think and you guys have like gotten into these territories of what do you think you want or attracted to and what are you actually doing in practice mm-hmm. at okay cupid we try to shorten the distance between those things which is why we ask questions like could you date someone that doesn't vote and then we ask you how important is this to you and we give you three answers and so our algorithm is, is truly in your hands we you know, say someone important a little important super important and that's how we you know and we'll weight that so you know part of the goal and the design of how the okay cupid system works is to slow you down to think about things a little bit more i've been married for i don't know nine years. I should know that right off the bat. My husband is like, know that in four seconds. Like, I don't know, four years. He's like 11. But what I've learned in my own relationship and also working with relationship experts and therapists and people that study the space is what is a fit for you also may not be something that you tick on an app or even be aware of. You know, an example is like, if you can't tell, I don't shut up. I'm a bit extroverted. I do like my quiet time, my alone time. I always thought I needed someone really similar because, you know, I'm kind of out there, I'm kind of loud, I, I'm, you know, I can piss people off, blah, blah, blah. And I thought I needed that. My husband is not, he's a little more reserved. I mean, he's funny, he's Chinese, he's Australian, he's like interesting in like a different way. So he's not extroverted in the way that I am. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't draw energy from that. He can be, and he, you know, and that actually makes us a really good fit because I pull him my way a little bit and he pulls me his way. And so how do you, and I think that's the next frontier for OkCupid is really using what we're learning about relationships, about compatibility, about, because there's being in a relationship and then there's being in a happy relationship right? And those are two very different things. And what are the ingredients? What are the circumstances? What are the things at play in that happy relationship? And then how do you go to the very, very beginning and say, okay, Ro, we know that you are, you know, what it feels like is this is all about you. This is what matters to you. This is probably a good fit with that. You know, how do you do that? And then, you know, make the experience even more thoughtful and and, and pull out these things that, that matter to people or that they're thinking about. And again, like keep the substance there, but, you know, think about these different, these different pieces. So I think that's one of the next interesting spaces that like, you know, we'll keep digging into. Someone just said OKC is like Travis McNasty said OKC is like sixty dollars a month right now. Ew, that's really interesting. I don't think that's it occurred funny. to me before that's that crazy. yeah, there could be a massive gap between what you do on the app and then like what you actually in your heart of hearts either want or need. And, and yeah, that's a- it's almost as if women don't know what they want. <laughs> <laughs> Lifetime journey. A lot of this conversation. That's is literally bad. what she just they talked about that for ten minutes and yeah. you could have summed it up at that. <laughs> I can see how that would be really difficult from like a data collection perspective. So yeah, thanks for that insight. This was a really, really helpful conversation. I hope we adequately asked and you gave great answers uh, to all of the questions we had from our Patreon members. So thanks for everyone who participates in our Patreon. This, and this came from our Patreon Discord. So if you want to join that, that's on patreon.com forward slash the female dating strategy. And you can also ask us questions for uh, future guests or future episodes. Before we wrap, did you guys have any more comments, Lilith or Savannah? And then I'll go into everyone. No, this Savannah. has been a great interview. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, truly. Thank you guys so much for having me and thanks for letting me talk about this. It's really there? interesting and you guys have you have such an important and interesting perspective. I, I would love to talk to you like offline about, oh, tell me more. What are your thoughts on this? For sure. So I really, I'd love to keep in touch and come back to talk about anything or be grilled or, <laughs> you know, pick your off brains. We actually have quite a few tech savvy users. So I would love at some point to talk to like an actual algorithm person because I think they would just go nuts because they love all the techy stuff. Yeah, let's do that. I think that'd be super interesting. So thank you so much for having me. I, it, I really, really appreciate it. That's our show. Join us at WD. All right. How okay. was episode 67 of the Female Dating Strategy Podcast? What did you think? Uh, you know what? I feel like I took away some good nuggets yeah. that I will use against Generally, them. like when yeah. Lev was here, they had nothing to no. provide. No. No. Um, that, like, There's a few things I'm like, oh, if I flip this in the way that they would never want it to be used, yeah. I can get more pussy. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. It's like you're using their powers against them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you got to get out of here. You don't want to do another episode, do you? Oh, no, I can't do another one. Yeah, uh, it's, it's I... hell. <laughs> so, oh, we're at an hour. How long do you go for? 
Sometimes, well, when I'm by myself, it's quicker. Because sometimes yeah. I do it by myself, I'll do two episodes because yeah, it's yeah. quicker. Um, but yeah, usually with two people, it's too much. Because then, yeah, we'll, we'll get like a three hour stream. Yeah. Okay, uh, where where can people uh, find you? You can find me on everything at Che Durena, C H E D U R E N A. Uh, uh, yeah, um, all tour dates and everything there on Twitch. I'm at Little Dinky News on Twitch and YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and YouTube. Uh, again, I'll I'll link all your stuff in the shit. Thank you, buddy. All right, Che, everybody. Thanks very much for joining us. Apologies for the technical issues that we had at the beginning. We'll be back uh, this Tuesday night. With an all-new episode of Low Value Mail, Wednesday, The Bathhouse, and then next Sunday with some more uh, female dating strategy. Thank you, Che. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Night, Scroats. Have a lovely rest of your Sunday. Bring the track to life when I spit phenomenal. When I hit, she feel that shit in her abdominals. These rappers make me laugh like comic view, they comic do. You know I got a ball out, I hit the track running just like Sonic do. They don't wanna turn on my light switch. Yeah. They was trying to get me on my hype shit. Yeah. They don't wanna turn on my light switch. Yeah. And they tried to down me on some KO type shit. Yeah. They don't wanna turn on my light switch. Yeah. Now we pulling up fresh on some flight shit. Ha. They don't wanna turn on my light switch. Yeah. They don't wanna turn on my light switch. Uh. They don't wanna turn on my light switch. Yeah. They was trying to get me on my hype shit. Yeah. They don't wanna turn on my light switch. Yeah. Then they tried to down me up some KO type shit. Yeah. They don't wanna turn on my light switch.